Good morning. It's uh, James Gerrish for a new segment of Market Matters direct from the desk. It's the 4th of August, about 11.52. There's going to be a quicker outline of what we're looking at in terms of, of the market, cover some of our um, brief thoughts on particular stocks, um, uh, sectors uh, and the like. Uh, today, we're going to look at what's happening in terms of CBA, our views around the uh, the, the um, uh, Austrack investigation in the CBA, whether we're going to buy, sell or hold that stock. Um, Suncorp came out with a uh, report last uh, yesterday that was below expectations. We hold Suncorp in the portfolio. What are we doing in regard um, to this? So I want to quickly start off by having a quick brief look at the um, um, broader market and just covering off some of our, our, um, our, uh, our views there. So wait till I jump on the, um, uh, the index there. So you can clearly see we're continuing to be range bound. The ASX 200 is on the chart there. We're trading at 57.23. We're down about 12 points. That 12 points is really coming out of uh, CBA today. That's taking about 12 index points off the broader market. But you can clearly see from what we're seeing on the, um, uh, on the, uh, on the index there, this, this, you know, this consolidation range bound pattern continues to, to hold upside resistance of 58.75, downside at 5,500. What we're seeing obviously from the index point of view, we think that we're going to go and test that 5,500 level, but no sell signals have been triggered just yet. We've got reasonably high cash levels in the MM portfolio. Um, the platinum portfolio is sitting on 23.5% cash. So you know, clearly we're looking for opportunities to spend that money. Um, and I think we're going to get it in reporting season. We've seen the bad news that's hit CBA today. That's knocked the stock off its perch. Uh, Suncorp was hit yesterday. So in the, you know, there, there is, the index is not being overly volatile, but there's a lot of volatility in stock specific um, instances um, on the market. I'll get rid of that and move on to what we're seeing in terms of um, uh, in terms of um, CBA. Just to give you just to give you an idea, we obviously hold CBA uh, in our platinum portfolio as well as our income portfolio. In the platinum portfolio, we bought at lower levels. CBA is currently trading at eighty one ninety four. Just to give you a quick overview of what's happened, they've basically Oz trackers. Um, um, launched a civil case against CBA, CBA on, on anti-money laundering. Anyway, I won't go into the details there. The main thing is around the potential fine that could be uh, lobbed at CBA. Now, the only thing that go off um, recently, I think the, the, it seems like there's been a, um, a federal court uh, ruling against Tabcorp on this same issue. They were fined about $45 million and that equated to about $400,000 per case or per, per contravention of that um, uh, of that act. So in CBA's case, this is it would be massive. They've got 53,000 odd um, contraventions of the act. It would be something like $22 billion uh, on that basis, which is which is huge. What's likely to happen is going to be a, a fine um, and the media are speculating and all I can go off is what the media are speculating, what those, um, uh, you know, what um, precedents could suggest that it's going to happen. But assume you do a $100 million fine, every $100 million relative to the number of shares on issue for CBA is worth about four cents to the stock price. So. Just to reiterate, every $100 million fine is worth $0.04 cents to the stock price. So you assume you have a $500 million fine, then that's $0.20 cents off the stock price. On the market today, the stock's been hit well above um, uh, well above that. So the CBA share price is down pretty sharply um, uh, in the market today. We're down 2.02% um, uh, we're down, uh, 2 .02 um, uh, for the day. So it's obviously been hit a lot harder than the, what the potential um, could be for it. I want to go back and focus on, so CBA, we've got in the portfolio, we're going to continue to hold it. Um, for those that hadn't bought it at the lower levels that we anticipate, that, that we've got it in, $81 seems a clear level of support. So we tend in, in these instances to buy when the market is negative and clearly the market is negative um, in the market um, uh, today. I'll just jump back into the charts there very shortly. Won't be a... Um, uh, won't be a sec. Okay, CBR on the charts here, 81.90. I want to move over into um, uh, in, into Suncorp. 
because Suncorp is a is a stock we've obviously got a large holding in in the portfolios, and they had a, they had a profit announcement this uh, week that was below expectations. The stock got sold off as a consequence. I'll just knock that phone off. The stock got sold off as a consequence, and 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 uh, was hit pretty hard yesterday, down around six percent. I want to focus on the areas of the result that was that was weak. Suncorp, if you think about that business, 90% of its earnings are in um, insurance and banking. So that's the key area that you want to focus on. And that key area of that, that business is performing well. So the key area or the bulk of their earnings are performing well. There was just a lot of, and I wrote about it in the afternoon report yesterday, there was a lot of issues within the um, some of the peripheral businesses within Suncorp, so those smaller components. It seems like the Kiwis are causing them some uh, pain in areas of insurance and banking, etc. So there was big misses there. The other thing the market was going for was around reserve releases. So if you think about an insurance company, insurance companies um, take your premium, they need to set aside money to then um, be able to service those claims if and when they come. We've had lower inflation, lower claims inflation, lower wages, etc. All things that mean it's cheaper to um, uh, administer or service those claims when they've arisen. So then you get the release of capital. We saw it with IAG um, a couple of months ago and Suncorp are now releasing capital. They released about 300 million um, worth of capital um, instead of um, reserve releases, it's called, instead of the 400 million the market was going for. So look, all this boils down in, we've got large positions in, in Suncorp. Yesterday's result does not concern us. We're buyers rather than sellers of the stock and yesterday we added um, to our existing position in the income portfolio. So I think that's the key um, takeaway in terms of Suncorp. GMA is another stock that we added to the income portfolio um, this week, Genworth Mortgage Insurance. And it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a, um, a stock that might divide the market. It's got, obviously they have, they, they do mortgage insurance for higher, more highly geared borrowers, etc. And I think one of the things that are important in that regard is that they they have got, like Suncorp, they've got a lot of excess capital on the balance sheet and that's what's going to support the dividend going forward. So this is not going to be a growth stock. They're not out there growing earnings. There's a lot of headwinds into this business, but they've got excess capital on the balance sheet, which is going to support their um, the dividend. Uh, and they've got a $100 million buyback that they announced yesterday that should support the share price. So um, we've added it to the income portfolio. It yields something like 12% um, uh, plus per annum. So we like it in that regard. Um, and uh, it was an addition to the income portfolio um, yesterday. I guess we'll finish up a little bit. These direct from the desk will be brief. They'll be very, um, very concise. And today will be no different. Our overall arching view of the market remains intact. We've got high cash, 23.5% in the portfolio, and that's we feel comfortable with that. Reporting season can throw up a lot of stock-specific volatility, a lot of stock-specific um, um, uh, opportunities. So uh, that's what we'll be looking for, and that's how we'll be looking to spend um, our uh, our additional capital in the uh, in the not too distant future. So on the market, I'm glad we've seen Suncorp bounce a bit. Suncorp's bounced. It opened down this morning, but it's bounced off its off its lows, um, which is uh, which is encouraging. CBA has been hit. CBA has been hit, um, uh, but again, it's trying to hold. Eighty-one dollars is probably the level that you'd be a buyer of CBA at. It's eighty-one seventy-four uh, at the moment. But again, we've got in the portfolio, and we're happy with it. I'll just I'll just go back to Suncorp just just very briefly because I wanted to see the impact of what happened from from analysts in that stock. Um, uh, from yesterday's downgrade. So you've got the market has gone from being bullish Suncorp to become negative on Suncorp. So you can you can see a lot of these analysts have downgraded their expectations yesterday and again this morning. You can see the best performing analyst in that space is from Bell Potter, T.S. Lim. He's ranked number one um, in the sector. He's got a 1485 price target. So number one ranked analyst is the most bullish on that particular stock. So you've got five buys, seven holds, and three sells. But you can go and if you want to do a little bit of a, um, a look at a look at um, um, what they've done historically um, and around their earnings. So there's been a cut to earnings from that result, but it's not a uh, it's not a huge one. So to me, Suncorp still remains cheap. We're still happy with that position. I hope you found the first direct from the desk. Um, uh, a little bit insightful. If there's anything you want covered, uh, happy to consider that uh, going forward. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.